Hey, uh, so I saw in your last live stream that you did when you were talking about Diddy, I don't think the apology had came out yet. Did it? Did it come out when you did your live stream on it? Uh, it came out while I was doing my live stream. While you're doing your stream. Okay. So I remember you saying you don't think you wouldn't be surprised if Diddy wasn't finished. I remember you said that you wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. A lot of people think he's finished. You said you wouldn't be surprised. I want to run the apology real quick. And then I want you to break down why you think that he might not actually be finished. Cause I'm curious in, in, in hearing that. Cause I didn't really hear your explanation on why you said that. Yeah. Um, but I am curious cause I'm one of those people that think that he's finished, but you know, your take on it is going to be really interesting. So let's run this first and then we'll get into it. Okay. It's so difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life. Sometimes you got to do that. I was fucked up. I mean, I hit rock bottom, but I make no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it, I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy. He sounds like he practiced this in the mirror a couple times before he went live. Yep. <laughs> yep. He ran that. He ran, he ran it back a couple times in the bathroom, looking in the mirror, doing the whole like gasping for air. Like, I just. OK, one more. I guess I'm just I'm just going through it. I hit rock bottom like now, nah, bro. This was this is not a good look. This right. is not a good look. Bro, yeah. it's so inauthentic. You said what? It's so inauthentic and fake. Like it is just, it is just, it's disgusting. It's so forced. It's so yeah. forced. Like it's just, this is somebody's routine. And they basically told him to do it. He's putting this out. Like this, and like I've heard people say that they think that he's got like good acting skills or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Like he doesn't even say who the apology is for. Like if you listen to the entire apology, he doesn't even say like, who the apology is directed to he's just like i'm sorry i'm so sorry i'm so <laughs> sorry i apologize like it's almost like that boondocks when that dude was like say you apologize you know what i'm saying like <laughs> it's like bro <laughs> right. well who you apologizing to and for what like i don't i don't know what you're talking about right, right. now you know what i saying? don't know but i'm just sorry then he then he like he goes on to say i don't apologize comma I'm so sorry. Like you just said, you don't apologize, though. But like, okay, weird. Had to ask God for His mercy and grace. I'm so sorry, but I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. Truly sorry. <laughs> How you not asking for forgiveness, but you truly sorry? Like what? And who are you sorry about? to? Who is this for? I don't who know. Who are you who, talking who to, bro? Man, yeah, that was that was this is definitely forced. The PR team, what's left of it was like, man, you you gotta do something. I think he was better off just staying in, in the shadows and be quiet yeah. than putting out this forced apology. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but get into now. Um, why do you think you're you're you think that there's a good possibility that he's not finished? Like you wouldn't be surprised. You feel like a lot of people are saying he's done, but it seems like you think a lot of people capping and that they'll have yeah. no problem looking over this. Why why do you say that? Because look at how many times people have looked over stuff in the past. What's different mm -hmm. about this time? People don't have enough common sense to actually do a required self cancellation. If law enforcement or some other force doesn't actually uh, do the cancellation, people don't have sense enough or intelligence enough to have uh, the initiative to do this on their own. They'll just look past it. Mm -hmm. They'll just look past it, bro. So as of right now, right, there isn't any actual indictment. There's not any actual charges. 
He's just being investigated. And this investigation has been going on for a very long time. He, uh, he had three properties raided. And the only thing that's happened since the properties have been raided is that this tape has been shown. This tape has been shown and the tape was shown and it was outside the statute of limitations, which if you ask me, means it was kind of strategically leaked. It seems like that. It seems yeah. like that, you know, that yeah. it came out now that it's outside of the, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, statute of limitations. They can't go after him for it. Yeah. Whoever is uh, could possibly be the mastermind behind this might be doing this, leaking these things and saying, see, close call. I leaked this out. What else do you think I got? I leaked this out. What else do you think I got? And the thing is, is, you know, Diddy should be done. Diddy should have been done a long time ago. Look who has the power to make Diddy done. Have they made him done yet? No. And if there's no, if there's nothing to physically remove Diddy from people outside of, uh, you know, society, like unless it's law enforcement or unless it's forces of nature, I'm telling you, bro, hmm. there should be no faith put in society to have common sense or responsibility. So he going to be back home with them. Take that, take that, take that. And everybody At parties. Get... <laughs> you have a new costume this year. <laughs> now, again, right. Halloween finna be lit. <laughs> it's finna be lit. He might be the diddler this time with the with the brown suit and the white question marks on it. You know what yeah. I'm What's that dance he be doing that? <laughs> yeah. Y'all in the Halloween party kicking. It. Yeah. He might be on camera. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't apologize, <laughs> but I'm sorry. You're right. But and I mean, I'm not like, asking for forgiveness, this, but I'm sorry. <laughs> look at who who are some people in the past that have had uh, checkered backgrounds like Diddy that society didn't cancel. There was no law enforcement effort. There was nothing behind it, nothing taken uh, to court or, you know what I'm saying, uh, charged or anything like that, convicted. And society just didn't cancel him. If if R. Kelly wasn't removed from society by law enforcement, everybody would still be playing R. Kelly's music. Everybody knew R. Kelly was kind of strange. Everybody's still playing his music, low key. They just don't want to admit it in public. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they still. I always strange. thought he was strange. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I always thought he was a strange dude. I thought it was weird. You know what I'm saying? Same way I always thought D uh, Diddy was weird. I, I like you know R. Kelly had a couple songs that I thought was pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? But like it's like. I just I had this it was just weird. Like, bro, you 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 just kind of strange to me. You know what I'm saying? So like I just mm -hmm. I never really, you know what I'm saying, got into him. Growing up in Chicago, and I'm curious because you know you in Ohio, so you're not, you know, we're not far away from each other, right? Yeah. Um, I remember when I was growing up though in Chicago, speaking of R. Kelly, I remember people used to make like kind of jokes or like kind of these tongue-in-cheek remarks all the time when i was growing up like throughout the time when i was in high school and stuff like that talking about r kelly pulling up to high schools like you know waiting for chicks like in the car waiting for high school girls like in his car like people used to talk about they, they used to say that stuff all the time you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying that would be like kind of like a little running joke little tongue-in-cheek thing r kelly pulling up to the schools and stuff like that so this is back when i was in high school and stuff you know what i mean so and these are things that were like kind of even it wasn't even like in the media like that. Like it was the stuff with him and Aaliyah, it's always circulated to some degree, but then it would just go away. You know what I mean? But I'm curious, like if that stuff kind of, you heard about that stuff in Ohio too, being that we're so close to one another, like outside of the mainstream media or no, like you, people weren't like talking about R. Kelly in that regard. Um, as far as like that level of details, like where, yeah. what he was doing and where he was pulling up to, Mm -hmm. I don't think that that was really being talked about. Um, mm -hmm. But then again, like I said, like I wasn't really an R. Kelly fan. So like those kind of conversations wouldn't have really come up because if somebody had a, been like, did you hear about R. Kelly? I'd have been like, I haven't even heard R. Kelly, let alone heard about him. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. But like I said, though, it was just like I, it would be certain songs that I would listen to. And just certain presentation of certain things in those songs just made me be like this dude kind of off a little bit like he just kind of off and then you know what i'm saying there was the Chappelle comedies uh you know sketches and all that and it was th that stuff it was just too believable 
Mm -hmm. I'm saying, and, and then just like uh, I don't know, man. Then all this stuff came out. You know, what I'm saying it's taboo to even uh, criticize R. Kelly. You know, like if you actually talk about R. Kelly, people flip out. You know, what I'm saying it's just like ah, oh, you know, people are just piling on and talking crap about R. Kelly, and it's like uh, I'm just talking about what was going on in the media that he presented to everybody. I don't understand why, like nowadays, when people present certain things people act as if we have some type of civic duty to only discuss what other people think should be discussed or what shouldn't be discussed when they make the rules to discuss it. There's no rules that we go by. You know what I'm saying? That we have to talk about certain stuff or not talk about certain stuff because certain people don't think that it should be talked about. We talk about whatever we want to talk about. Exactly. You know, something that just popped into my mind right now that's really interesting and it leads to what you're saying about how you can see him kind of bouncing back from this really easy. Like nothing happened by next Halloween to another Halloween party, costume party, dancing, talking about take that, take that, take that mm -hmm. was when you brought up Dave Chappelle. Right. Yeah. Now, let's go back to, you know, when I was in high school, whatever, you know, back when I was in high school. Also. The tape drop, you know what I'm saying? The R. Kelly, with yeah, the, that tape with the, with, the, with, the, with the chit with the little girl, right? Yeah, that he kind of magically got off on and pawned it off on his brother. He said, That's like my identical brother, that's not me. <laughs> like, all right, bro, you know what I'm saying? Right, but the point is, is that as it pertains to comedy, right? That whole thing happened with R. Kelly. And it wasn't immediately afterwards, but over R. Kelly, but he carried on as if nothing happened, right? You know, with his mm -hmm. career. And then, you know, some years went by and then we get into Dave Chappelle, right? And the whole, like, you know, uh, he, he had whole skits. I think he had maybe like one or two R. Kelly skits uh, that were huge. You know what I'm saying? Everybody thought it was funny. I think he, there was like some song called like, yeah. I'm going to pee on you yeah. or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, he had some stuff like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And it, I mean, I'm gonna lie, it was funny too. But yeah. um, <laughs> but that helps in masking the seriousness behind the allegations and or truths to things of this nature. And and I link that now to no Diddy. Remember in the last live stream we had when we were talking about Diddy, this was pre uh uh, uh um apology, right? Mm -hmm. You know, me, like many other people, you know, I, I started adopting the no Diddy phrase, right? I'll be talking, I mean, no Diddy, y'all, <laughs> you know, laughing or whatever. Then the Cassie tape comes out with what he did to her in the hotel. And if somebody has said in the kind of live chat, they said, man, you know, I'm not going to lie. That whole no Diddy thing, that's not even, that don't even sound funny to me no more. You know what I'm saying? Because like him just kind of, just having a bleeding heart as a human being, like, damn, like he really did whoop her ass. Like, all right. I can't I can't say that no more. And I felt the same way. A lot of people felt the same way. I saw a lot of other people. There's this guy that I follow on YouTube who put a community post saying, like, I will never say no Diddy again. And a lot of people like are like, nah, we done with that. Right. But. With all the allegations on top of them, with the home rage that we've seen, everything that we saw. What you said held true, because prior to this tape coming out, mm -hmm. the no Diddy lingo spreading like wildfire everybody's saying it gucci man made a song about it it's now become one big joke and once it becomes a joke it becomes a non-issue it starts you get what i'm saying it starts to dilute the seriousness of it it dilutes the seriousness of it now the yeah. only, now the only thing that happened is that this tape came out and it kind of to some degree kind of messed up the joke you get what i'm saying because there mm -hmm. are some people like myself and many others that kind of were like yeah I'm, I'm cool on that but like you're saying if there's no physical force to come by way of police to remove him you know from the scene to get him up out of here so you understand the seriousness of this you know what i mean or if nature doesn't take its course and we all know what that is you know what i'm saying right Things that just happened to people naturally um then yeah, there's no reason. What's to say that he won't just bounce back? Because those there's people like me and you know, a few other people that feel like, yeah, I'm not gonna say no did anymore. I'm not cool with that. The vast majority of people are gonna keep saying it and don't care. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if that's the case, then I mean, yeah, he may bounce back. You know, by yeah. fall. You know, what I mean? See, like here's the, here's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. Diddy is done since this tape out. Right. That's like what the mm -hmm. videos are uh, like. If you watch YouTube and look at the YouTube uh, homepage, that's what all the videos say. Right. 
Yeah. How many days ago did the tapes come out? I don't even think a week. Is he done yet? Nah. Still here. You know what I'm saying? All of those no. all of those uh titles were lies. Mm-hmm. He's not done. You know what I'm saying? Which is sad. And and if he's not physically removed, like I said, the disappointing nature of people should not be ignored when looking at these type of situations where we're expecting society to regulate itself. Society's not going to regulate itself. Society has only shown to be regulated by force. Facts. So if nothing forces Diddy out of society's access, society's not going to do anything about it. No. Society's not going to do anything about it. And what society is going to do um as it pertains to diddy is going to contradict itself like right now Mm -hmm. because what i'm getting ready to do is throw up this clip of desi banks you remember who desi banks is 